there, Akuma fans. Charlie with the Gossiper Application Staff. I was just sitting here about to tell a really cool story, and, well, hey, since you all popped in, maybe you want to hear about it, too. I was just uh, sitting with a customer the other day, and he said, Charlie! Yeah, man, I'm, I'm just about to buy a programming software for my Akumas. It's called... What do you think about that software? And so I said, yeah, yeah, you know, I really like that software. Have you uh, thought about uh, the solid verification for after the program has been produced? Oh yeah, man, totally. This, this <coughs> has a built-in verification. It, uh, it proves out the, uh, the program, you know, right after punching it out. It's really cool. Hmm, that sounds really good. Yeah, I, I, I've had a lot of luck with those. Do you uh, see the entire machine in that solid verification? No. Oh, well, it's not totally critical. Does, uh, does the behavior of the machine in your solid verification match what the Akuma is going to do perfectly? No. Well, uh, yeah, maybe you're in the market for uh, an aftermarket software that shows the whole machine and, uh, you know, uh, verifies the program exactly. Yeah, yeah, I was actually looking at one. It's called... <coughs> and it's a really good verifier. It shows the whole machine. That's good, 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 good. Is it a generic depiction of your machine or does it show all of the accessories that are uh, installed on the machine. No, no, it, it, it's just a generic model, you know, the accessories don't show up. Well, that's not a horrible thing. You, know, I mean, you can work around it, you just have to be extra careful. So once you uh, take all the time to install the models in this uh, aftermarket verification software, can you then take those models and import them directly to your collision avoidance software that's installed on the machine? No. Hmm, well, uh, maybe you're okay standing there populating all your collision avoidance models at the machine tool, but you know, if I could offer you something that would do all of that, all in one, would you be interested in listening? Well, come on, man. If I wasn't, I wouldn't have called Charlie. True enough. So let's talk about three-dimensional virtual monitor or 3DVM from uh, Kuma. All right, Carlitos, you got us all fired up with the software. Tell us about it. This is the main menu for AdMac Menu Turning. That's the master software package that houses three-dimensional virtual monitor. And I could set up a tool library, specify where my files are going, tie into my editor, whether it's WordPad, Notepad, or one of the aftermarket editors. It also has a CAD program for assistance with trig and figuring things out. But the three-dimensional virtual monitor is what we want to talk about today. This is this guy right here program check. As soon as I select that, it gives me the option of either OSP simulation, which is the basic three-dimensional graphics that you see on all OSP controls, or the three-dimensional virtual monitor that is the target of our video today. So I'm going to go ahead and start that up, and it shows me, boom, a machine. Let's give it full screen so we can see the whole darn thing. So here is the machine that I've selected. And as I alluded to in that crazy uh, lead in, this is based on a specific machine serial number. So here are the machines that I currently have loaded in my uh, PC. And you notice I have multiple Multis U3000s, multiple 4000s, but they are serial number specific. So this is built for an exact machine so it's got all of the options and all of the configurations that this particular serial number has going for it so this is what i'm demoing today is a u3000 but it is available for any machine configuration that you have 
and let's take a look at some of the uh, some of the ins and outs of three-dimensional virtual monitor the purpose of this video is not to teach you how to use it it's basically just to show off and show you what this software can do now you notice that I'm uh, I got a little roll action going on here I'm having some fun moving this around I'm using the center wheel of a mouse and that enables my rotate by using the center wheel with control i can zoom in and out center wheel and shift i can pan so i have full three-dimensional views and i could absolutely zoom all the way in to take a look at one specific item or come back out and see the entire uh, the entire machine itself i can also configure the screen around me currently i have a distance to go uh, a DRO basically for both the A and B turret and I've got spindle and W and, and all the other things that you'd expect to see on a machine but in this upper left hand corner I'm going to go into the view screen and customize my turning window I can have a display of my A turret program I could also turn on my hey there's the B turret program and one of the things that I really like is right here there's an NC operation panel which allows me to have the same type of buttons feed rate override reset cycle slam and feed hold all set to go right on the side of the screen so it just makes it a little more like the machine itself speaking of like the machine itself when I go to populate things such as the spindle and the tool magazine, it looks almost exactly the same as a machine tool. So let's start with spindles. I've got both spindle setups right here in the upper left hand corner and by selecting the individual spindle, this, if you're familiar with your three, uh, your uh, CAS system on your machine, it looks exactly like this. So I have the ability to create or read models that are already in my library. I could manipulate models. Hey, let's change this around and say my datum's on the back side of the part, all of this sort of thing. And by doing so, I can build up a machining environment. And then just like the machine tool, I could save this entire environment. Let's call this a test. Oh, I already have a test. Let's call this test one. There we go. And yeah, I want to output the cast data, put it all in there. Now I have zoop, saved the machining environment and I could just export this to my machine tool. And it'll, you know, instead of standing in front of the machine for five minutes to construct this, I did it while sitting at my desk, nice and comfortable. And then it only takes 15 seconds to deliver the entire package to the machine. Once I'm done, I could transfer this into the uh, machining environment, my changed graphics, and here's a delightful little uh, little tool that's in the 3D virtual monitor. I can have it set a work offset automatically based on the size of the chuck model, the jaw model, and the part model. So now, okay, okay, there it is, transfer is complete, and if I were to zoom in as soon as this thing is registered you'll notice that there is a small wcs icon right here showing me hey there's your work offset so i know that's correct do the same thing with spindle number two and i could also dunk, set up tools now i already have an extensive library in my 3dvm just because i do this all the time However, let's run through and show you a few things when setting up a tool. It does have the easy modeling function, and this one is identical to all OSP controls. Now, if you don't have CAS on your machine, all you'll generally see is the blank and the tool, but CAS owners will recognize all of the different uh, model library categories that we have within this 3D uh, virtual monitor system. And I can create a new tool exactly as I would with uh, the machine itself. Let's create a, oh, let's do a DNMG just to say we did. Uh, the tool length is gonna be four inches. We have a one inch shake, 109 lift over, 15.6, so one inch and a, uh, oops. 
1875 insert thickness and boom hey look at that we've got a dnmg now i can save it in my library as a dnmg stick tool and okay now it resides in my library and i'll never have to create another one of those even if it has a different insert in it because that basic configuration is exactly the same I can also import solid models from the manufacturer. Let's just say, for instance, I already have a bunch in here in a catalog. So, hey, nope, let's find one that's a little, little out of the out of the realm of normal, such as, hey, there's a head for a DCLNR Sandvik boring bar. So you can import STLs right here at your PC without having to take them out to the machine. Once I'm done, I can tell the machine either this tool is mounted to the turret or it's not. So currently we'll turn that off. And now you're gonna see that my tool block, I only have one on my turret right now because there's only one here that's listed as on and it's in station two. I need it for this demo. So let's turn it back on in station one. And then we will, there we go. Now we have our tools. I do have portions of the program, but let's do a little file, select NC program, and light that off. Okay, cool. So there is my program listed off to the side. I'm gonna call that back up again, just so that uh, we can see it as it runs. There's my turret one and doo -doo -doo. there's my turret two let's even those out so we can see both of them now here's where this software just rocks i generated this code with a cad cam system and i'm not sure if it's going to do exactly what it's supposed to do so i can now just use either my cycle start button or the play button and off we go. There's a facing move. There's a turning move with the upper turret. You'll actually see it come back and change tools. And there I've got oh, minus variable limit. Well, this is a great little example of oops, I forgot to set my W0. So let's look at one more little tool that's up here in my edit menu. I have an item for data set for turning. And this rocks. I can set up tool life management, tool compensation. There's zero set. That's what I'm going to have to change to get my W axis to not generate an alarm. But let's finish run, running through this list and show you a couple of things like the common variables, G and M code macros, system parameters, the home positions. So I can configure this software so that it has exactly the same data that I have in my actual machine tool. Okay, so let's open up that data set for turning again and go into our zero set. And oh, oh look at that. I have no value in my W axis. So I'm just going to set that at 15 inches set. Now, do I know whether or not that's right? Gee, I don't know. Let's see about what is going to happen if I send the machine to W0. Oh, how the heck do I do that? Here's another great little tool for you. In the execute menu, I have a manual and MDI operations tab. Here we go, right here. This allows me to do quite a few things to either the A or B turret, first or second spindle. I could tell, I could command axis motion if I know exactly where to send an axis to. Let's say, for instance, I want to send the X on A turret number one spindle to five inches. Boom, there it is. And look at this. It reported a collision. <laughs> no good. Let's take that back to, say, something way in the heck up in the air. I could also jog the machine. So let's do a little, oh, hey, look at that. I can microscopically move it. And just like the machine tool, my DRO is keeping track of where we are right now. I can do a tool change too. If I chose, I could pick up a tool position and a tool number and select the macro I'm using, either 423 or 323. And then I could execute and it would change tools for me. 
But here's the great one, MDI. This guy right here, if I simply command a G0 to W0 and execute, boom, there we go. My spindle came in and it... That looks about right for gripping my part. Awesome. So let's take this back to 100, execute, get rid of that guy, and now we should come back out and let's try our program again. Currently, I have this um, this set to to only warn me. By changing the, uh, the the chucks red, warn me when there's a collision and make a little noise on the, the machine. But at any given time, I could tell it, hey, stop on collision. And the reason I did that is because in my haste to make this video, I did not make my through hole on my chuck big enough. See that? It's tiny. So it's going to register a crash as soon as this guy goes over to uh, to grab the part. And yeah, well... You already know it's there. So let's go ahead and execute and see what happens. Let's run our speed down so we can actually see the thing too. Do a little turning, a tool change, do a little axis motion, a little bizarre little move. Notice it's registering a crash on that spindle. So I did not make it past my tool, which means I know I've got to go and make a tool index in my program so that it can clear this uh, this spindle housing. But there we go. I made it all the way through the part. I know I've got some issues that I need to fix. And I've got the entire function, the entire part laid out for me right here. That is three-dimensional virtual monitor. How cool is that? By the way, I didn't uh, have to do it, but if I needed to, I could jump in here and edit my program. And then just like everybody's OSP control, there is a button right here, whoops, to reselect the program. And then all my changes become active, just like uh, as, as if I were at the control. Then I could export the tool data zoop, with this little file, tool data file save. And then I could insert it into the machine. Now, hopefully, eventually, the library that I have in my three-dimensional virtual monitor will match the one I have in the machine tool. But if it ever, if I ever created a new tool, I could do it right here and then export it to the machine and everybody's happy. Now, I'm going to go ahead and just pick up another machine so that you can see that, oh, yeah, look at this. We've got to shut it down. Bring it back up, call up three-dimensional virtual monitor, and now we have a completely separate machine. Both of these machines that I was using today were multitasking centers, but Akuma does have this for mills, lathes, uh, horizontals, you name it. If you've got an Akuma, we've got a 3D VM seat for you. So I hope this helps you out. If you're interested in more information about th your 3DVM opportunity, give your sales representative a shout or you can like or comment in the video. I do answer the comments as quickly as possible. So anything you'd like to mention, feel free to give me a shout.